I wanted to do another video on riot shields because I hadn't done that for a while. And riot shields are um, pretty practical things, but how practical are they? Because obviously they're fairly big. And the thing is with these is that they come in obviously a lot of different shapes and sizes. And I think they're very, you know, differently suited for different things depending on what size you get. So the smallest ones you get are the little round shield ones. I'm sure you've seen those a lot. And from what I understand, a lot of police forces use those as sort of quick into action riot shields that they could keep in regular police cars or vans and the the officers wearing them don't necessarily need to have specialist gear on but they could use them for normal baton or truncheon and the smaller round shields now the round shields seem quite practical because obviously it's probably using you know same logic as using a medieval very small round shield lightweight easy to move around but can obviously block incoming projectiles and blows and then you use your right arm or whatever to hit normally now Obviously then you get the bigger and bigger sort of tower shields, so this tower shield is probably a bit under 5 foot, I'm not quite sure of the height of it, I've never actually measured it from tip to toe, but these are pretty good. This is actually called a high shield according to, well this is a bit weird because it says shield personal protective short and high, so no clue if it's a short or high shield, but these are the armadillo type ones the British police use and a few other nations use. These are very good shields because they've got one front shield and they've got the reinforced sort of back shield. And the idea is, I'm guessing maybe the short one is the rear shield, the high one is the front shield. The idea by having two shields means that, let's see, when the first one starts to break you've got a second shield. And the second shield helps to absorb impacts that hit the first shield, making the whole thing stronger. You'll notice a lot of the riot shields tend to have a smaller shield behind and the sort of front shield mounted to it. So, these are normally always made from polycarbonate, at least the good shields. And polycarbonate is a very strong type of plastic. It's what they use in riot visors and motorcycle helmet visors that are made out of plastic and things like that. They can basically take a lot of blunt force trauma and sort of edged things can hit them. Now, polycarbonate can obviously be penetrated by bullets and crossbow bolts, I think, at a high enough velocity but it's not easy stuff to get through. But one of the advantages is, despite polycarbonate being so strong, it's relatively light. Now this whole very big shield probably weighs only about five kilos maybe, might be a bit more, I've never actually weighed the shield itself. But as you can see, you can move it around fairly easily. You wouldn't get too tired having this on your arm, especially when you can just pop it on the floor. Now, you also get much, much higher shields than these because uh, this one only comes to about my waist. You can get the shields that would basically touch the floor and go over your head, so they're probably like six foot something shields. And those you sometimes see in riots, I guess, to try and block molotovs coming in over the top of shields. Obviously with a shield like this you could do that, but you see some that are very, very tall shields. Now, they don't necessarily look that strong to me at the top of the shield, and I've seen videos of those in use because the top section is obviously meant to be a bit wobbly. Um, and I'm guessing as well it's because the structural support of having the smaller shield behind is quite small compared to the rest of the shield. But there you go, so you get the round shields and then you get the sort of rectangular or tower shields, whatever you want to call them, in various different sizes from very short to um, fairly tall, you know, taller than the average person normally. Now, obviously the practicality of riot shields is something very tall probably becomes very unwieldy um, because the weight increases as does the size and obviously trying to move a very long piece of plastic. The trouble with riot shields doesn't so much seem to be their weight, it seems to be how they sort of almost pick up the air underneath them if that makes sense. That's probably not the best way to explain it but it means that you know if it's a bit gusty or whatever it would, the wind would hit the very big flat edges of the shield and try and move it. Now Something like this is probably the biggest size shield I'd ever want to go for because I find even a size like this is slightly impractical simply because obviously, as I said, you don't want it, you want the shield to be shorter than you but you probably don't want it to be, you know, still not massively shorter than you if that makes sense and not, you know, too close to your actual height. Um, I think the round shield probably end up being the most practical at least for sort of quick response and general use and obviously as they get bigger they become more specialised. Now if you had lots of officers in formation, shields like this would obviously be very good. Um, now, these shields are kind of interesting because with these shields, um, you've obviously got several different factors at play. Now, obviously, what I'm trying to get out of this, because I'm stumbling a bit on what I'm trying to say, is that 
the sort of bigger shields, as I said, are clunkier to move around, but obviously they are much better in a bigger formation, whereas the shorter shields are much more mobile, but they're obviously often not going to often nowhere near as good protection. It'd be very hard to kind of do a shield formation with lots of people holding smaller round shields than it would having lots of people, you know, holding these and advancing with these. Now, shields can be used in kind of both an offensive and defensive way, and when police use them as much as they're sort of how the police are meant to be trained to use them is not to sort of cause permanent injury of them, so they're not really going to be smacking people with the shields as much as they could. Obviously, one way of using a shield would be to have um, like a trunge or whatever in one hand hitting with that and then using the shield to block. You can also grip these shields lower down, most of them have a secondary handle on so you can hold them like that comfortably or sort of grip them lower down and that can be used to thrust, so it's basically do you want it on just your left hand where it's less stable or do you want to use a shield two handed increasing the stability but you know obviously you can't wield a weapon in the other hand. Now. In terms of survival scenarios, I imagine shields would be very good for that, especially if you've got something more practical. You could probably mount a really strong flashlight behind one of these somehow, so you could actually kind of blind people as you walk forwards with a shield. Um, and obviously it will stop lots of incoming threats, like sort of bricks and slingshot things, lower speed arrows and everything like that. But m the main thing... I'd find quite interesting about these shields is in some sort of theoretical zombie type thing or 28 days later some sort of rabies virus these shields would probably be quite good for that I'd imagine simply because you can block somewhere and infected fluids can't hit you the other day Shed Ninja was um, not the, not hit you the other day can't hit you with the shield in the way I was going to say Shed Ninja said to me the other day you know something quite interesting that I've always complained about is in loads of infection type things and all movies like that nobody ever seems to take precautions about getting hit with you know infected blood they never have their visors down on helmets they never have the shields out you know so fluids can't hit you but in the thing where there's some sort of contagion in the fluid I'm sure you could actually use the shield to stop yourself getting splattered by you know all the sort of projectile vomit and whatever else that's going a bit off topic now but yeah so in terms of the practicality of riot shields obviously I think the smaller they are, the more practical um, for actual movement and just being easy to have on you um, and learn how to use. But the bigger shields are obviously more practical in terms of total defensive area. I think once you get to the absolutely massive tower shields, then they probably become very impractical. Um, for those of you interested, no, these can't stop bullets. As far as I understand, the polycarbonate like this can stop um, things like birdshot at a long enough range just because it simply doesn't have the sort of kinetic energy to get through a shield but it wouldn't stop you know handgun ammo or rifle ammo at all you do get ballistic shields but they're generally made from I think both metal and Kevlar and they're generally much thicker and heavier so a ballistic shield would be smaller it would be much much heavier but then yes that could stop bullets but something like this would not stop bullets it stops bullets of course now, if you've not seen my videos um, on the practicality of these shields, then I'd advise you, well, practicality, but I've done a video where this shield is tested, just search Riot Shield on my channel and you'll find it, it's quite fun, we just had a mess about, you know, me holding a shield and getting kicked and punched and hit with melee weapons with a shield in front of me, works surprisingly well. As you can probably see on this one, there's scorch marks, there's things where it looks like it's been hit by everything under the sun, um, and the shield's still in good condition, there's a slight crack near the bottom of it somewhere. I don't know if that's going to be visible on camera. Um, but other than that, the shield is in very good condition. If you're interested in getting shields, they do sometimes turn up on eBay. I think you can order new shields from China, but good luck getting them through the customs in your country. I don't know how well that would work, and I don't know how good the shields are. Or you can do what I do, see when the ex-police shields are, sale, uh, shields are on sale get them for a sensible price and you can hopefully pay like I did about £30 for one of these and have a really big riot shield to play around with.